Hello, welcome back to the allotment. Today I've just spent about half an hour in the polytunnel harvesting the most dreadful harvest of onions I think I've ever had. Um, and getting it organised ready for the tomatoes going in later this week. Now, obviously I'm pretty sad that I had a rubbish harvest of onions in here this year, but as you could see at the start of the video, it is so overgrown and weedy in this kind of one metre square patch of um, the polytunnel that I have. Um, and I think the main reason for that is that there's a lot of um, mare's tail in the polytunnel and there's lots of um cooch grass not cooch grass that sticky stuff um i can only remember the rude name for it so i'm not going to say it but this kind of sticky grass that has those little seeds that get stuck on everything um and every single year all i do is really water this area and the weeds just get out of control on here so this year the first year in four years i'm actually going to put some fertilizer on here apart from a couple of years where i've had to tomatoes and I've just given them a feed I've never actually fed this soil at all so today I'm just giving it a really good weed over then I'm going to put cardboard down not today but I'm going to put cardboard down and some shop-bought compost on the top hopefully that is going to be a really thick layer going over the top of the soil and that's going to stop and suppress all of the annual weeds that grow here it's not going to stop the mare's tail but it's much easier to keep on control of pulling out mare's tail as it grows through the cardboard I had also planned that this area would be used for melons this year but unfortunately my melon seedlings are not doing very well and they've not got their true leaves yet and since we're in like the almost I think the middle we are in the middle of June almost oh my god that's crazy but um I'm not going to be able to do that so i've got some tomato plants at home that can go in here later in the week and i've also got some bean plants that i can interplant there too ah i remember now that grass that i was talking about that's really sticky is called goose grass so yeah that's a bit of a nightmare but it grows all down the side of here so it's really hard to get rid of and it just kind of invades this area every single year um, but anyway, that's pretty much done now. I'm pretty happy with the amount of weeding I've done here. So um, I'm going to get some cardboard down maybe later tonight um, and then um, compost maybe tomorrow or something like that. And then I can bring you along when I plant the tomatoes in here. Um, but as we are mid-June now, I thought it would be a really good opportunity to bring you along to the allotment and show you what I've been up to. I have been so busy at home planting up the um, polytunnel and stuff that it has been neglected down here this year. But I am starting um, to get a little bit more organised. So I'll take you over to the plot now. Not loads is going on, but it's a great opportunity for me to show you around. Welcome to the allotment in mid-June. As much as it looks a little bit um, messy at the moment and a little bit overgrown, there is actually quite a bit of stuff growing in here. And a little bit of a disclaimer before I get told off by anyone, um, I have actually been working pretty much full-time hours and the jobs that I do um, are kind of day evenings all over the place. and. Um, having the kids and stuff and the garden at home it has made coming down here a little bit harder it used to be in my first couple of years i had this allotment i didn't actually i was still on maternity leave or i was working one day a week and it was much easier to come down kind of you know and spend a good couple of days or three days a week down here um but the last couple of years you know after covid things have not been so easy but the wood chip here has really saved me so much there's a few weeds in and about the um wood chip pathways but it's much easier to kind of keep on top of um but the the main thing i've been working on the last week is this area here i used this area last year to put all of my potato buckets down but that wasn't very successful um and then this year it's it's not been doing very much at all so it was really overgrown i had, I had a dalek compost bin here which i've now moved um just behind here so with this area it was a bit of a dumping ground to be honest i had loads of my potato buckets on top of it i had wood and stuff like that where i'd been holding down cardboard and because of that when i actually kind of started tidying it up the area was completely full of slugs and snails so you know i don't want to really create a beautiful habitat for my pests to actually live in so what i did really was just pull everything back and put cardboard down 
I then moved my compost bin. Now, the compost bin that was here, I think I put it down in January 2019, so it was pretty full, but it was full of an ant's nest. So what I did first was just come down take the lid off the um, compost bin and then actually like kind of take the plastic bit off but I left it all together in a really big mound for about three or four days to hopefully allow for the ants to kind of move out and go wherever they wanted to go and then um, I came back and just put um, the cardboard down and then I was able to kind of move um, the compost around now with that compost because i'm a little bit lazy i just never really cut things small enough quite a lot of it was still not very rotted down so i moved most of it into there but the bottom bit which was the best um i just left in this area here i had a couple of potato buckets as well that i tipped out here but apart from that there's still quite a lot of space in this area underneath um some perennial um kale that I've got here there's still quite a lot of cardboard there but I don't really want to spend very much money on this allotment this year so I think I'm just going to keep putting cardboard down on it and as and when um, the season progresses and maybe um, I feel the need to buy in some compost I'll put some compost on there um, but yeah it's very much a work in progress but I reckon this has got to be maybe nine Oh, I'm not very good with maths, but a good maybe six metre area um, of space I'm not utilising at the moment. So I definitely need to do that, especially for next season. To the left hand side of the area that I've just shown you is my um, potato patch. Really pleased with this. This is where I'm growing my Sarpomira main crop potatoes. And um, I went with the trench method this year, which is the first year that I've done in about four years. And I'm so pleased with how well they're growing at the moment. I did do a video on that actually. So I'll put a link to that above in the description now. And the reasons why I went for a trench method rather than in buckets or no dig. Um, but so far, I'm so pleased with them. I have earthed them up slightly now. And um, since they're about a spade deep, I'm not sure if I'm going to earth them up anymore. Maybe I am, but I am going to have to really kind of scrape it in there because I've used most of the soil up now. Um, but they are doing so healthy and since they are a blight resistant potato, hoping, fingers crossed, I'm going to have a bumper crop later this year. So over here in my wooden raised bed, um, I'm sat next to the biggest kale plant ever. Um, but as you can see, it's full of seed pods now. I let it flower earlier in the year and then I've just completely left it to um, set seed. So it'd be really interesting. I mean, this is full of seeds actually. There must be thousands and thousands of seed pods on here and you can probably cook them, but I'm just gonna leave them and catch some seeds. Um, the actual seed I can't remember the variety of kale actually but I got these from the heritage seed library um, but yeah anyway it's in the way here I'm not showing you that this is my potato bed so these are my um I think these variety of potato is I can't remember Colleen again I think that is a blight resistant potato but these are a um first early actually so they should be out before we get blight but as they're growing really nicely i've just left them to it really these have been planted one trowel depth down so they probably will need a little bit of an earthing up um, but with most first early potatoes they generally don't grow up the stem they kind of just grow above the seed potato so hopefully it won't need loads of um, soil or anything but this bed is full of loads of seaweed so hopefully they're going to do pretty well they're going to have a really good feed um, and just along the front here we've got some more of the sarpomira potatoes i had about six left over um, so i put these in about a week after those ones so they're a little bit behind but they are coming through now so watch your space with those um, but yeah i can't wait to see how these potatoes do they're probably getting a little bit shaded out um, by this kale so maybe I should snip one of the um, one of the limbs off there but I just don't want to <laughs> and while I'm here I've got to show you my lupins I absolutely love lupins and somehow I'm actually quite successful with growing them from seed all of the ones you can see here are grown from seed um, and I think they're a mix of um, tall russell 
and something hybrid, I can't remember, but we've got some really nice kind of baby pink ones there. We've got a slightly darker red one there and this really lovely um, purple and white one, um, but they're just setting seed now. So I'm gonna be saving the seeds from these and then replanting them. Hopefully um, I can get a patch like this in the front garden. Um, I've already got a couple of them, but when I planted the ones in the front garden, they all happen to be this kind of purpley color and they haven't grown as big. Um, so it'll be Operation Grow Lots of Lupins this year, um, saving all of the seeds, and then hopefully I can get a massive show like this in my front garden. I live on a main road, so I would love um, to be able to have um, a massive, amazing display just like this in my front garden so I can just brighten up loads of people's day. There's a bus route that goes up my street, actually. So, you know, they can probably see a really good view of my garden. So yeah, if I can make it really pretty with all of this kind of stuff going on, I think it look lush. This bed here is probably the biggest failure at the moment on the plot and probably the one bed that I'm most upset about. Um, this is my squash and courgette bed. Um, so just the very bed back here, actually, we do have a hollyhock, which hasn't done very much this year. Um, but here I have a, um, I think it's a pink banana squash, which has hardly grown since I put it in about three weeks ago, but it is still there. So fingers crossed that one does take off. Um, we've got a courgette here, which is, pretty is still alive it's still there but it has been attacked so much then we have another courgette plant here which again is just it's just absolutely rubbish um we then have another courgette plant here which has completely disappeared uh, so annoying and then at the very end we also have another squash plant which is looking okay it doesn't look like it's been attacked that much at all but it's just not growing so i'm really hoping that we've got nice weather today that over the next couple of weeks they really start to put on some weight and are able to start growing before they just get annihilated by the next lot of rain that we have and the slugs going mad and the last bed i'm going to share with you is the onion bed it was actually the onion and carrot bed and um, i actually did a video where i planted them and sowed some um, carrot seeds the carrot seeds were doing so well they all germinated really nicely we had some really good weather i think it was maybe early april late march early april and they'd all germinated really nicely and then we had one day of rain i came back the next day and they were all completely gone i don't even think i have one carrot left so the onions are here they're doing okay um, but nothing in comparison to the years before quite a lot of them are bolting these ones in here are the red onions i've got the brown onions at home in the polytunnel which if you watch my last um, update from the polytunnel they are doing absolutely rubbish as well um, so we are going to have a harvest from here but i don't know whether it's the compost that i've used this is brand new bought in compost this season or whether it's um you know just a bad season i'm, I'm just not sure um, but i do think that this autumn I am going to spend a lot more time thinking about how I can kind of enrich the soil here rather than keep buying in year after year um, peat free compost that has low nutrition. So who knows, but um, sadly it's not the onion and carrot bed, it's just the onion bed. But if you want to see what it looked like when I actually put them in, I also filmed that. So I'll put a video up above in the cards for you to have a look at. Um, don't know if you can see on camera now, you should be able to. I also have a gooseberry plant here. That was put in as a cutting in my first year at the allotment and I was going to move it. I just put it in, I kind of healed it in and I was going to put it somewhere, but I didn't. Maybe actually a fruit area would be really good in the area that I was just showing you at the beginning of the video that I've cleared. Maybe that could be a good idea for a little bit later. Um, in the autumn, I could set up a fruit bed there. I'm thinking out loud while I'm talking to you. Um, but anyway, that is what my allotment looks like in mid-June. I would love to hear how it compares with yours. 
So there is another area of the allotment that I've forgotten to show you and it's this bed here. So at the moment it's still got the compost down um, and there's a few potatoes coming through here. This is another one of the long beds that I've got but I haven't decided what's going in there yet so it's just still left like this. I need to get some more cardboard and put it down and um, at home I have a number of squash plants that I've not planted out. Um, quite a few of the squash this year I've actually planted at home in the front garden and stuff. Um, but I am thinking that this bed will actually also grow some squash in and maybe the squash can go kind of onto this new area here and across the pathways and things like that. Um, but when it comes to actually planting them out, I think I might let them grow on a, in pots a little bit more and then use tomato halos to grow them in. And hopefully that will just protect them a little bit more while they get established. Um, but that is just, yeah, the last bed that is ready to have something in that I've, I've not put anything in yet. So there you go, that is what my allotment looks like this June. Now I know it's really unruly and there's still so much work to be done but I am so pleased with how well it's coming along. These pathways are just so helpful having and it's really easy just to take the weeds out as they come. I've got food in the ground that I'm going to be able to harvest in a couple of months and I'm just so pleased when I make these videos and especially down here at the allotment I do think it's not very Instagrammy. I should be filming it looking absolutely amazing but that's not me and that's not the way I garden you know I'm busy I'm pretty much working full time and I've got kids you know so actually I think I'm doing pretty okay and I hope that if there's some of you out there that feel like you're struggling with your allotments you'll realize we're all in the same position at the moment and it does feel like this year things just aren't growing very well but who knows I'm going to keep trying to keep on top of watering these courgettes every day hopefully they're going to grow hopefully this weather's going to stay like that but thanks so much for watching today's video if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos please do hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of all of my latest videos as ever YouTube have some videos up now on the screen that they think you'll like so please go ahead and watch those and I'll catch up with you in the next video. Bye.